Hey everybody, put my hand next to the camera. It's windy. Troy from the do-it-yourself world and the off-grid project. Forgive my stumbling. I'm trying to block the wind from the camera and walk at the same time. We got another load in. Another load of uh, firewood here. Now this is all dry. Mostly all dry. I don't know what wood. It's. I think it's the same as the other. Look, maybe you guys might recognize what this is. There's spikes all over this. Look at this. There's like thorny spikes and bumps all over. Um, I think this is the same. Well, I know this is the exact same type of tree as the other. But look at these thorny spikes. And, and bumps all over this. Now, I'm not familiar with elm, but I looked at the leaf. Look at that spike right there. I looked at the leaf... And it looks like elm, so I think that's what it is, but I don't know. That's some weird bumps and warts all over the wood. Anyway, this stuff is very, very dry and ready to burn. And we got a couple pieces of pine in here that's dry, and a few pieces of, of wet, I don't know what this is, wood. <laughs> um, the bark looks like pine family of tree but the wood looks just like the elm it's odd see there's the there's the tree we were hauling previously and this is a, a smaller uh, one of the exact same type of tree that's from the same job site okay that's what we've been hauling recently and then I just cut this one down today and I don't know what that is. I do not know what that is. Um, again, I thought it was, and the, the owner thought it was a, a pine tree from the outside. It really looked like a pine tree. But when I cut it, it smells like Play-Doh. If that tells you anything, it smells just like Play-Doh. And that is not the color of pine. Oddly, it looks just like the elm. But the tree bark is way different. And it's not got the the knobs and stuff in it. Here's a piece that's got a lot of waviness. It almost looks like oak when it's dry. It feels and looks just like oak, and it cuts just like oak when it's dry. So we got a mess of that ready to burn. Oh, wait a, wait a minute. Oh, look at that. There's some knobs under the bark. Or is that part of that first tree? Yeah, it's all mixed up. I don't know if this is from that first... That might be the same type. Eh. It might be the same type of tree. Yeah, there's knobs under the bark. It sure is. It's just different looking when it's younger. I guess it's probably an elm then. Well, anyway, we got a big load on. We got to unload it. Some of it's burnable today. Some of it won't be. And uh, I'll show you later what I got um, over the past couple days. We've been hauling wood heavy. We just didn't take time for the camera because we were so busy hauling. We've got so much wood to get, it's out of control. There's the dry wood we can use now, here and now, from that pile. Not bad. We got some other wood over here that I have to cut from the previous loads. It's a little longer and that's ready to burn now. But for the majority of that, that's going to be ready next year. Out here in the bus saw, I don't know if I mentioned when we first got this, when Chris and I first brought this over to the homestead, I cut off the motor. And just now I put in a piece of 2x6 and set a motor on there. I figure I'd share with you what I'm doing. I'm going to put a gas engine on there so that it's portable because um, there's no power out here. And I'm going to. I have to take off this, um, whatever you call it. What do you call that to keep the belt from flopping? I'm going to take that off and see if I can get this belt to fit on here. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Anyway, so I'm going to pull it off and uh, see if we can get this motor on here and see if we can get this buzz saw to run, start processing some firewood. I got the 2x6 screwed on and then I drilled some holes for the motor 
to go through and I fit the belt pretty tight I believe that's gonna work so uh, there's a little bit of slack I don't know what's gonna happen when that warms up if I have to I can put a tensioner on we'll see what happens I hope not but I'm gonna tighten these bolts and then I'm gonna have to see if I can get that engine running I hope that the uh, membrane is good inside there. If it is, I'm going to add some gas and we might have a, a running bus saw yet tonight. We'll see here in a few minutes. Well guys, I got great news and I got bad news. The great news is the motor's on and the belt turns and everything's awesome except the bad news. Watch that when I pull the handle, the starter handle, which way is the blade turn? Uh, pull that starter handle watch that blade backwards no good no good no good I didn't even think that would be backwards uh, well we'll have a pretty looking machine but it won't do anything <laughs> so uh, gotta rethink that yeah, I don't know why I didn't think that I just assumed that was gonna hook up and go Chris you didn't think of it either eh? Yeah. we just hooked it together thinking hey we're gonna put a motor on that and run it yeah. but nope so we're gonna have to build a side tray on that to run to hold the motor <sighs> I think our brains froze <laughs> it's too cold out <laughs> oh well that's the end of that for today this is three truckloads Melanie and I hauled the two of us together and Michelle Michelle helped a lot we got a lot of popple all up in here and all in through here and then we got some uh, some kind of hardwood down in there there's a mix looks like some pine oh no what is that not pine that there's a whole mixture of stuff in here some of it's dry and old like that one and that one's very old and there's some mixed in here I'll be able to split and burn but we got a we got quite a mixture here of wood some are big I might I don't know if it's worth running that on a mill and um, I can get quite a few boards out of that little piece for the wood shop that's poplar there's some thicker logs in there I don't know if it's worth it or not but there's some really good thick logs here and there that I could get some wood for the wood shop yeah we'll see once I get down to it but it's a decent amount of wood we hauled a lot up in here there's some dry sticks I've got to cut a chainsaw and cut it down to size and those will be ready to heat our house there's another good piece of wood not sure what that is either. It looks like cedar tree bark. I don't know. Well, that's a hardwood. That is a hardwood. Huh. Yeah, I'm going to have to learn my trees because that one there, that's another hardwood. That's solid, thick wood. That too. I don't know what those are to be sure, but that's all what Melanie and I hauled the other day together, three loads. Well guys, now there's a beautiful sight. And it's not Chris I'm talking about. <laughs> uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We decided to put, there's a 12 foot span between the corner pole and the other, so we're gonna put one at six foot. The rest are all at eight foot. Oh, that's a relief, isn't it? Yeah, it is. So we'll let you enjoy and have the honors of us putting in the last one. You can sit back on your couch and relax and watch us suffer and hurt. <laughs> yeah, it's cold. It's cold. Straw and mulch, no fun to dig. Now, 
We only have a few inches, it's hard. After that, we hit sand, it's easy. Something's down there, sounds like. See, now I hit the sand. And then down at the two foot mark, there's a gravel bed all along here. You can almost count on it. All the way through, there's a gravel bed at the two foot mark. See how that feels. You're way off here. Yeah. Must be my side good. Hey, hold it. I forget I gotta check the wire. Yeah. We're way off in the wire. Oh okay, pull it out. Oh, of course, the last one ever. I dug it wrong. Ah. It's awkward because I've got too many things in the way right here, and uh, I didn't—I I cut too far back. I gotta check the bottom. Check to make sure I'm at the right depth. 24. All right, check it. Now Chris is setting up the level, and then we got to check it with the wire on here. And make sure that, huh? Not even touching. Uh, how 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 bad or how close? Oh, way in. All right, let me move it. Try it now. As long as it touches the wire. some more yeah. all right guys you're not gonna watch us finish this one the last one is the worst I got too much junk in the way right here so I I, I dug out too far I gotta redig well guys that's a fence line ah, that is a pretty straight fence line 
Now the two end ones have to be adjusted because when I set the wire, it was in the middle on both, so they're both off. But it gave me a straight line to run the rest of them. I think we did a good job today. That's seven of them we ran today. Yeah. After cutting trees and hauling wood. You know? Yeah. So, all right, guys. This is the cold part of the night. Oh, it's getting cold, yeah. Well, that's a relief. I feel good yeah. about that. That's that's definitely... I'm definitely happy. Yeah, because the ground, we, we had to get it done before it froze. Yeah. It was a stressful time for us. I noticed that they're not all perfectly straight. I don't know if they were all exactly eight feet, but I really don't care because we can trim the tops if we need. And uh, the fence itself is going to be straight top, so I'm not worried about that. You can Plus see them. Some of the um, holes aren't perfectly straight either. Well, they're yeah, nothing's perfect. The pole, the uh, the poles might not be the same size, and of course the ground is uneven. Yeah. So it is what it is. I put them all to the same depth. But anyway, that's it for that for now.